Hey, welcome everybody. Welcome back to the Tech Mex podcast. I'm your host, Eric Ramirez, and I've got Mando Gomez here with us today. Say hi, and Mando. You use the Eric like how you will pronounce it in Spanish. I like it, man. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, little by little, you know, I gotta, I gotta introduce that. I've been rolling my R's, been practicing. <laughs> Either way, today we've got episode 12. And we've got a we've got a, a few topics today. You know, a lot of things have been on the news recently. Burning Man, and we've got a couple of uh, kind of macroeconomic updates to share with y'all. So uh, let's get into it. Dale. Dale. All right. So <laughs> tell me, what do you want to know about Burning Man? I'm a seasoned burner, man. <laughs> seasoned burner. All right. You, uh, <laughs> that's, you know, that's pretty good. I, I started going um, in 2018. And and you know my friend, you know you know Lee. Uh, yeah. Shout out to to my to my homie, to my homie Lee. Um, <laughs> I mean, he has been going for I don't even know how many years now. But uh, I remember the first time that they went, it was uh, Lee and 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 James. Uh, okay. Basically, and when you go there, you you choose a name like they call them the playa name. Oh, and by okay. the way, uh, they call it the playa because it's in the middle of the desert, right? So. Let me step back a little bit. Uh, Burning Man is is a is an event that is about maybe eighty thousand, sometimes even up to a hundred thousand people, and it happens uh, close to in Nevada, close to uh, the closest airport is um, Reno, and it's basically about maybe two three hours away from uh, from the airport. In this, they create a city, uh, which is uh, Black Rock Black Rock City. And I believe there used to be a lake because it's very, very flat, but it's just kind of dust um, in the middle of the on the desert. So a lot of extreme temperatures, hot and cold, right? <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I ran into a lot of folks going to Burning Man unknowingly a couple of years back. I think I mentioned when I saw that UFO in Tahoe. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I was in Tahoe and it was, I think that the, during that time, Burning Man was about to start. So I saw tons of people at the Reno airport. They had like uh, buses and stuff that was, that were going to go out there. So it's, it was a big deal. Um, I really, I knew about it only because right. Our mutual friend Lee always mentions it. He's like, wants me to go out there. I've, I've never gone by the way, but you know, mm -hmm. I hear, I've heard lots of stuff about it kind of along the way. Right. So, it's, but it sounds like it's pretty big, 80 to a hundred thousand people. It, That's it huge. is. And, and when they went, um, they went by them just by themselves. Right. So, and this is years, years ago. Uh, now the camp, uh, has grown almost 30, 30 or plus people, man. It's, it is a big mm -hmm. camp. Um, and one of the things, and he's. And the what leader. do you mean by camp? So uh, what happens is that there is no resources, right? There is no bathrooms. There is no water. There is no nothing. They actually install porta parties, which is nice, but uh, you have to bring your own water. You have to bring your own food. And some people they they literally start camping, and there are many ways to to do it, right? Some people they they don't like camping per se, so they use RVs. Mm -hmm. So uh, some people go and park with RVs. Some other people say, you know what, I prefer camping. They put the tents. And lately you're seeing these uh, metal thingies. Uh, sometimes they call them yurts. Um, it's kind of like a pot. And, and they are made of a, a material that is kind of reflect, reflectant. And, but yeah, you see different type of people uh, camping in different ways. That's pretty cool. So the camp that you went to, the one with Lee this year, I guess now it's many years later, right? Uh, mm -hmm. What kind of camp is it that the style that you went to? So um, there are camps for everything, right? And I think that one of the, the, the event has some principles which they wanted to make you self-reliant or have your own expression. I think that that's kind of the beauty or, of why I keep coming back, right? Um, number one, I love art. It's like you see uh, art everywhere, right? Like, uh, and, and very creative people. And also you, you are hearing a lot of music. It's like literally almost every camp, they have music playing, right? And, he, and they create um, uh, streets. And it's interesting because they, the way that they create them is almost like a, a by, by a clock. So you can have like a, a three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, et cetera. And you also have lanes. So it creates a grid between 
uh, A, B, C, D, up to uh, sometimes H. And then it creates a grid where you can tell people, uh, I can meet you in 4.30 and B. So, mm. and, and you can ride your bike, right? Okay. So that's literally how you translate, I mean, commute inside of the, uh, of the event with so bikes. The, so the Burning Man uh, area itself is laid out into kind of this circular clock grid, yep. I see. And there's like a concentric circles or so does it go all the way around full circle is it like it a half circle no, or it, something it, it just has been growing i think that in some point there might be it might hit a limit um i'm expecting that maybe up to i don't know maybe 150,000, maybe 200 people they'll close the circle it has been getting wider and wider um something interesting is that the uh, the whole event it happened 30 years or whatever ago and uh Basically, they used to do it in San Francisco, in on a, on literally on the beach. So, and they created this this man. They made it of wood, and they burn it. Um, so, and that's where they they noticed that the event it was getting with a lot of uh, uh, people from San Francisco. Then they find uh, they find this venue, and then they start doing it in, uh, over here. Ah, cool. How long does the how long does the actual event last? Actually, uh, so. Uh, there are early access uh, to the to the place to the playa, um, and basically, some people they go two weeks before, right? Because some of the structures, man, they are gorgeous, like they are, they are beautiful, and they put machinery, right, just to be able to to build them. Uh, so basically, some people start going two weeks in advance, uh, but they allow you to get in. Like this time, they allow you to go from Sunday. Uh, the 27th up to uh, basically on Monday, which it was uh, Labor Day. Uh, this year was interesting <laughs> <laughs> because there was a uh, rain and it just became a mud man. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, mud. I heard mud apocalypse <laughs> happen yeah, I mean, on the news. Like. I think that that's that's one thing that in my mind you have to to approach it like uh, like what you do outside uh, on real life. It's like uh, you're there. As might as well enjoy the mud, right? Like make sculptures or or, or just jump in the puddle of water, right? Like uh, I, I think that uh, sometimes um, the news was being very very alarming. Oh, these guys are stranded in the middle of the de- dude. We were having a good time. <laughs> uh, you mean the there days- wasn't there wasn't an Ebola outbreak? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you never know, right? Maybe I got Ebola and I don't even freaking know. <laughs> so uh, one of the days that it was raining, uh, it was very clear because there is obviously the sunshine. Uh, it created a two rainbow. Double and, rainbow. And it, a double rainbow, man. Like the guy that was viral in one point. Double rainbow. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And I have pictures uh, uh, <laughs> to prove it. So yeah, you you see that uh, a double rainbow uh, came out, and it's just the whole thing was just beautiful. Uh, that sounds that sounds pretty cool. Well, so I mean, you hear a lot about the type of people that go. You know, there's like mm-hmm. celebrities and stuff, and a lot of I guess rich people. Is is that like it's <laughs> all of that, or is there like a a mix? Who, who's the type of person that tends to go? You got it, man. You, you, Elon Musk goes right. Um, I'll tell you. Last year, I was literally on my bike with my partner with, with my wife, and and there was a sandstorm. Uh, that it just happens because those are called whiteouts. There are literally so much uh, sand that you cannot see anything. So you have to stop because it becomes dangerous that you're in your bike and sometimes there are mutant cars which are mm. pretty big and they just might accidentally just run over you, right? So we just literally saw an, a structure that is almost like a pyramid. Mm-hmm. And it's like, hey, you know what? Let's, let's go there just to get some shelter um, because sometimes the, the whiteouts it's 30 minutes, one hour, two hours, just to the wind to go through. And we get into this place, and uh, suddenly we see maybe like uh, 25 geeks there, right? Like you can see that there were some nerds there. <laughs> so, and, and, and then a guy started speaking, right? Like he was like uh, almost presenting, and some people were recording. So I, I see the person, like I told my wife, like, I think that this guy is the open AI guy, the, the mm-hmm. chat GPT. But in that mm-hmm. time, uh, Sam Altman? Only, 
Sam Elman. Yes, that's right. That's right. My other homie. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> he he was not uh, uh he was not in the in the news that much. I mean, the guy is is known uh even before ChatGPT. But then uh, he was actually talking about uh, Dali, the uh, the generation of images, etc. Mm -hmm. And and his point was that he wanted uh, all of the the people from the creators and designers to use the the tool, and that was kind of the conversation, uh, the debate uh, to go through. Then I told my wife, this guy, and I, I, I explained her, hey, this guy is actually quite smart. He created this company, which is OpenAI, and he's, he's literally building all of the next generation of AI. So my wife's like, oh, okay, whatever. <laughs> so <laughs> like, uh, yeah, basically, right? But I said, no, no, let, let me, let me, let me talk to him after, after work. Dude, I was wearing like a cheetah pants. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, but, and the guy literally Sam Altman was wearing like uh, bell bottoms okay. uh, like um, yeah yeah so then he's like hey dude uh, it was nice to meet you nice chat right like um, I start chatting just with him uh, literally I kind of spot that he had two bodyguards like oh, kind of uh, cool. around, around him right but mm -hmm. they didn't engage or they didn't know anything uh, I think that in that time that guy was worth maybe a half a billion Mm -hmm. um in that time now probably he's worth way way more but uh to your question you see all kinds of people and right? like from billionaires to paris hilton right dj literally <laughs> <laughs> you know that might be interesting to go see that might be fun <laughs> you have to go uh you have to go i think that uh in some point we will, we will have to kidnap you <laughs> Yeah, it's like you suddenly show up in the desert, like what the heck? <laughs> <laughs> you know what really interests me is those, uh, uh, like you call them, the mutant cars, the things that mm -hmm. spit fire and all of that. I think that that'd be something fun to work on, you know, towards towards Burning Man. There, there are so many stories of uh, people literally cutting off their hands, right? Because <laughs> yeah, they are they are building these mutant cars, and suddenly, boom, an accident happened, or they are just moving the 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 sheets of uh, metal and coding very bad. There is a lot of stories on, on that. I, I think that um, you see different sets of people. Uh, the event, uh, it is almost found, founded by geeks, like uh, techies mm -hmm. uh, from Silicon Valley and San Francisco. And you can see that there is a, kind of a merge between uh, technology because people need to build infrastructure uh, engineering right the the whole mm -hmm. uh, because sometimes they just build it to burn it <laughs> 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 so so you see that merge between engineering and and tech and as well art which mm -hmm. is for me is is just fascinating it's it's i'm, I'm a techie right so uh, i love that i i that's the reason why i fall in love with the with the event um you see the instagram chicks right like uh like it's like, hey, <laughs> let me take my picture. <laughs> <laughs> They're having a good time out there dancing, whatever, experiencing. Yeah, yeah. So, so you uh -huh. see all of that from from older people, right? Like, uh, literally experiencing life. Uh, in our camp, we have multiple of those. We have like people that are sixty five years old, right? And and enjoying it, right? Like being themselves. Mm -hmm. And and when you ask them why you're here, right? I mean, they could be in in a resort in Hawaii, right? Like mm -hmm. laying there because they are, they are well off and they just wanted to go there for, uh, because they can ex experience and, and be themselves. That's what usually they say. Well, does it, is it pretty expensive to get over to Burning Man? Look, the, obviously depending where you are, right? If you're in uh, New Zealand and you have to travel to US, I mean, even just transportation is tricky, right? Uh, mm -hmm. So that that's a big portion, right? To get just to to Reno, let's say that you drive some people up to to actually rent a car and drive. If you're in San Francisco, it takes you maybe four hours to get. So that's the reason why a lot of people from California uh, they just drive uh, there. Uh, but I I think that uh, here's something interesting. Um, uh, some people actually skydive. From oh, wow. Little, uh, and, and you see people, and actually those people, they didn't pay a ticket because that's one of the other problems. It's not only to have the money, 
sometimes you don't get access to the tickets. So sometimes the tickets are scarce because people want to go. And and then that's what it makes it a little bit more pricey because they you start finding tickets in eBay running up to 10K, right? Oh, scalpers. So, yeah, freaking scalpers, man. I hate them. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I, I'll I'll tell you a cost. Um, Are all tickets the same though? Is this like just an entry? Or it there... is an entry. Yeah, okay. you you get basically the the ticket entry that uh, depending on the wave where you are getting the tickets. Uh, the cheapest one is four seventy five, something like that, for one hundred seventy five dollars. When you are part of the community, the camp, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But then they start getting pricier and pricier, but it's almost like a 575 if you are buying it directly uh, from the event. Uh, they, call, they call it the FOMO because we're missing out, right, um, uh, at some point. But then you start seeing on the second market $1,000, $2,000, even more, right? Um, I think that this year you start seeing more tickets because uh, for whatever reason, people it was less people than uh, last year. Uh, Maybe a little bit of the what is happening with the economy. Uh, maybe a little bit because last year was very, very hot. Like, mm. like it was even for the season burners, it was hard. <laughs> so and this year was really wet. <laughs> in this re- year, so so I think that uh, it might weed out people that they don't care, right? Uh, but I, I think that uh, we'll see. I think that the next year might snow, right? In this rate. <laughs> You never know. <laughs> you never know. You never know. So, well, so I think that answering your question, uh, maybe uh, between two thousand twenty five hundred bucks, uh, because you sometimes you have to buy your gear, right? Maybe you won't need to buy your tent. Maybe you need to buy some sort of clothing. Maybe your boots, because some some people like to get them uh, hiking boots because you're gonna walk a lot. Mm-hmm. But some people might not care. They just might go in flip flops, right? Uh, I can tell you that the <laughs> the, the sand it, it is um, very alkaline, so it will it will eat up your skin. So Ooh. I will not recommend people to <laughs> to be with no shoes. But go you see chanclas. Them. Yeah, not a good idea. Uh, you can get your chanclas, man. But uh, I would not recommend that your your feet will eat up. <laughs> <laughs> well, how do people like do just like normal things? Like, how do you eat? Use a bathroom, stuff like that. Like, how does that even work? Uh, that, that's the beauty of it. <laughs> I personally, though, um, I like, I'm very extroverted. Uh, I like to beg. <laughs> I like to, I like to literally go around cam by cam, right? Like, hey, do you want some bread? Do you have some bread for me? <laughs> <laughs> and, and some they tell you GTFO, right? Like, uh, get out of here, yeah. <laughs> But uh, but uh, I mean some some they are kind souls. It's like yeah sure come over like and some actually like they have like pancakes or waffles and they have extra food and and they they just literally give it to you. So I think that and and they have um uh, like a little booklet that you can see day by day and hour by hour uh, what are the events and some events are food. Like uh, mm-hmm. I remember in one year. Uh, there used to be this camp called the uh, Serial Thrillers or Serial Killers, something like that. And they will offer cereal okay. uh, in, in the mornings. So, and here's the cool thing. They actually have a mix uh, of different cereals. So you say one or two, and they will mix them. And they will have all kinds of meals, right? With some people, they are lactose intolerant, that they will have mm-hmm. coconut or almond milk or whatever. And it was fabulous because I... Who who would think to actually freaking mix cereals? <laughs> but guess That's what? I, fun. Yeah, yeah, I, I I knew it there, and and they also put it like a like a base. You could choose your your cornflakes, or you can choose your whatever or your puffs, whatever is your your cereal of choice. But yeah, and then that's how you get food, right? You can get in your own camp. We have our camp. Um, some camps they set times. Hey, we're gonna do coffee in the morning between seven to nine, which this time we do, we have a, our camp for whatever is reason, we got a lot of Russians mm. <laughs> and, and also Ukrainians, uh, which is just, ah, the whole dynamic is, is mm-hmm. very interesting, right? So, uh, our camp is very, very well diverse, but a good portion of, uh, Russian and Ukrainian. So you'll start hearing a lot of, uh, Russian in the background. <laughs> 
there there was this uh this guy that he would wake up like 7 a.m to make uh seven liters uh, of coffee oh. uh, and and he made like a a, a turkish coffee dude delicious because when you are there um you are kind of deprived of uh good food i guess and salt and and, and all of it that uh, maybe for day two or three you start actually tasting different things because you're not getting used to you're drinking a lot of water you're watching everything right mm-hmm. and uh, things are tasting way better right because a little bit of sugar a little bit of salt is just just pops in in your mouth you're like uh, detoxing <laughs> of the yes. daily sugar or something that they yeah, yeah. normally you, get. You, uh-huh. you, because you are, you are, and some people do it, right? I have a friend that he's into a lot of the spirituality and meditation and, and yeah, that's, that's what they do it. Um, I personally do it though, uh, because I want reminders. Um, we talk about Seneca, we talk about philosophy in one of the episodes. I recommend you guys to, to take a look on that one. But, um, one of the things that Stoics or Seneca was saying is that sometimes you have to remember it's okay to sleep on the floor, <laughs> <laughs> right? It's okay to just eat your arroz and beans, right? Like a mm-hmm. frijoles. Uh, nothing is going to happen, right? And and if you are able to force yourself to to be in a very precarious conditions, which is like literally on a tent, sleeping on the floor, like almost like a hobo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Then you know when you go back to to society, it's like this is not that bad. You know, you are right. very grateful. You are very mm-hmm. thankful of uh, the things that you have. So I I do also use it as a reminder of uh, of that to mm-hmm. to keep me grounded. That's pretty cool. So what what's one of the meals that you would normally have that in in your the camp that you went to? Uh, some of the they are typical, like easy to make, right? For uh, some of them, they were pancakes, right, or waffles. Oh, okay. <clears throat> so, which that was nice. But uh, the cool thing is, when you are with a diverse group, you get to learn different dishes. So hmm. uh, the Russians they did this dish uh, called uh, borscht. In my life, I have seen that uh, dish because, and it was like a spot on, because it, one of the days was very cold and very rainy and wet, and mm-hmm. because you are in the desert, sometimes it's very extreme. It's very hot or very cold. And when it was rainy, it was very cold. Um, almost freezing temperature. Oh, like, wow. Uh, yeah, like um, we were in the, well, you know, like 40s, right? But I still mm-hmm. very, very close. And and these guys, they did a soup. It's almost like a chicken soup, um, but very reddish. <clears throat> and it's called borscht, uh, which it was just literally what we needed in that point, right? Just mm-hmm. to, to keep us warm. And and then you you started learning about different things. There was an Indian guy that he did some some curry and, uh, but again, is is it? Re- I really recommend it with with being with a place where you have diversity, so in that way you get to to experience other other type of foods. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool. Well, so you know a lot of stuff in the news we saw is like, um, you know. People weren't able to get out because of all the rain and the mud and stuff like that. I mean, we even saw, like, I think one of the news outlets had, like, an interview with Diplo, uh, the <laughs> DJ, right? He was saying, like, I got, pick, I got picked up on the side of the road that he was hitchhiking because they he had to get to, like, a set somewhere. Uh, I don't yeah. remember where, but he had somewhere to be. So the only way to get out was to, like, hike out and then get hitchhiked. And he was together with... Uh, Chris Rock and Cindy Crawford and a bunch of other folks, and they just kind of made it out there. Did did you see a lot of that going on? Yeah, and actually, um, when that was happening, we got the news because there is a radio, uh, literally a station where uh, kind of you can hear what is the news of what is happening on the event, and they were telling us to not get out, uh, that in some point we will get the people that they were trying to get out, they will get stuck. And as well, they will give you a fine if um, uh, if they cut you, right? They are, there is kind of like an internal police. They call them the rangers. Uh, sometimes they are, I think that they are volunteers. I, I have no idea. But uh, that they will stop you. And if you get stuck, they will not help you. So there was a lot of fear um, <laughs> injected there, right? But I think that um, by uh, Saturday, Sunday, we decided, uh, me and my wife, to leave. Because uh, we cannot foresee that uh, that it will take several days, though. Like uh, 
maybe until Wednesday. That's what we were thinking that because it was very hard to to dry. The sun was not getting too too hot, so we thought that it would be very hard. So, and people like that, right? They, they had some obligations. Other people will lose their flight. So yeah, you you start seeing those. The reason why we did it, we tried to get out, is because we had a four by four, and and basically that's that's how we decided to 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 do the, the experience. <laughs> but uh, here's what we did though. Um, it's funny because uh, the person that was driving, uh, he was wearing a um, a suit, a lion suit. <laughs> <laughs> so so and and uh yeah and, and and basically people that know me they think that i'm i don't have a heart and they were just mocking me that i was like thin man <laughs> so then everything was like the dorothy right like yes. a wizard of us <laughs> the yellow brick road <laughs> in this case it was a sand road <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and there was a, a an rv and these guys, they they actually had their chef figure out because there was a guy getting out with a lamp because it was dark. It was maybe 8 p.m. Mm -hmm. and, and he was trying to look uh, where we should be able to, to walk. But the guy was very uh, animated. And... And basically, my wife was saying that he was the scarecrow. <laughs> <laughs> so we had a scarecrow, the uh, the cowardly lion, and and, and Tin Man, right? Tin Man, <laughs> and your wife's Dorothy, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> so um, then, then that's how we were out. We were able to to go out. Uh, uh, we were looking into the the road to make sure if it, if it was too loose, right? Uh, I was kind of getting out sometimes, trying to see. Uh, there were a couple of streams that you needed to have enough uh, inertia to pass through. Mm -hmm. So it, it was, we slided multiple times, right? Like uh, when you will slide like in snow or with oil. Yeah. And the good news is that there was not a lot of cars. So uh, only one time we another truck actually crashes on us because they were like uh, sliding a oh. little bit. So like, oh, fuck, because you don't have a lot of control. Mm -hmm. uh when the mud then you you were sliding but yeah we were able to get out and we we were praying right like my wife's like oh praying like hey help us <laughs> any <laughs> help will <laughs> will be helpful right and it worked it worked always pray <laughs> i know right <laughs> uh well that sounds like it man a, a memorable a memorable uh burn it sounds like so um it's not gonna deter you from going again uh next time oh, right? man it's like uh, <laughs> that's those are the things that i've lived for <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> for content for the podcast <laughs> <laughs> oh man well that's that's pretty cool maybe one other thing we could touch on is you know a lot of people you mentioned a lot of people go there for the art they go there you know for the people and mm -hmm. you know these experiences um isn't there like a lot of a spiritual component to a lot of the things that go on there too yeah you see <laughs> you see true hippies and I, i'm not saying <laughs> the word hippie on a despective way actually i have a lot of, i think that i'm a hippie <laughs> mm -hmm. i might not look like one but I, my soul is a soul of a hippie <laughs> so yes uh there is a i'm a very spiritual person i would say i'm not religious but i'm more spiritual right so and you see a lot of them uh which I think that is like um, you see self-expression in mm -hmm. all in all gambits of everything, and also sexual expression, right? Some people that they feel that they cannot be their way with their identities uh, in the event they are, right? So, um, I, and I think that that's what you are trying to do. That's the reason why they they ask you to use a different name, so in that way you you literally try to express yourself. So. And and some people express it differently, right? Some people uh they they wanted to do a spiritually meditating, right? Some other people they just see nature because it's beautiful, man. Like this the the sunrise and the uh the dawn and, and, and the whole at night it's all dark and and it looks like la like mini Las Vegas, right? Because the lights and, and the mutant cards and everything is just a show every every night and every day. Um so but going back to the spirituality, yeah, there's there's people. Uh, I personally meditate, right, uh, several days uh, in the mornings, 
uh, after my coffee, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> How does that work? It's not counter. <laughs> it's, no, not, not at all, man. Because you are like uh, you are sleeping two, three a.m. or even more. Right? Some people. It's funny because I I was there drinking my coffee and I see this uh, the chick. Uh, it's like, are you just coming back? Yep. <laughs> 7 a.m., man. I'm just wow. barely coming back from, from partying, I guess. Uh -huh. And it's like, well, good for you. Go on, sleep some. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah, it's uh, uh, you sometimes you need the coffee. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Well, that's that's pretty cool. It's, it sounds like you had a lot of fun there. So if there's someone that wants to go like for the first time, what do you what, what would you tell them to do or how, how should they prepare? Um, I think that uh, go to the main the main page, uh, kind of read it around because I I really uh, tell people to uh, to try to understand what is the the, the reasoning behind the event. Uh, there's a bunch of principles of awareness, what we believe. The other thing is that um, one of them is that we shouldn't leave trash, right? And you can see the people that they truly care about the event because they will stop their bikes and pick up trash. And they will put it in their pocket, and they will throw it in their own in their own camp, right? So part of the the deal with the with the government is that we will not leave trace behind, right? So the whole playa has to be clean again. And imagine, I mean, everybody's partying, or these mutant cards, and people is bringing all of these camps. You have a hundred thousand people, and it should be clean, right? <laughs> <laughs> so I, I do recommend people just to go to the burningman.org website and and read a little bit about the event. Uh, yes, the event can be whatever you want, right? It could be partying for a week straight, or it could be a massive, like, a spiritual event, or it could be just, like, a wow experience for great artists, uh, great DJs, great music, right? So, again, it's, it's, it's for, it's, there is something for everyone. Um, this year, though, for me, uh, it was interesting because of the meditation, though. Uh, do you meditate, by the way? I've tried it a couple of times and it's pretty interesting. I think it does get you into like this different frame of mind. So you can definitely take some stuff away, but it's not something I do consistently. Lately though, executives and people in, in high roles, uh, they, they are using it. And, and it used to be like a kind of a hippie thing, right? Like, oh, there's only hippies, right? And, and, and Indians meditate. Not at all though. I, I think that now they are noticing that there are benefits of doing meditation and in different levels and and i do recommend it um i'll tell you uh what i do many ways to do it right um i tell you two things how i know people do and 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 maybe you can for the audience <clears throat> so the most simplistic way and and i'll tell you the scientific there are some google shit as well there right but let's <laughs> let's just do the the scientific portion when you're meditating your frontal part of your brain uh, kind of is working, but allows your brain to 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 put you in a almost in a flow state. So <clears throat> one way to do it is just to try to focus in something. So when you, uh, there is people that they like to install apps, there is a bunch of apps. There is a lot of music. You can go to YouTube. There's a lot of people teaching you that things. But I think that sometimes they're overcomplicating things. Uh, for me, is just go to the basics, go to the simplistic things which everybody's breathing, right? Like you're breathing every single second. <laughs> so one way is to just uh, follow your, your breath, right? So you're, you're inhaling, you're exhaling. And close your eyes in a position. You don't have to put your hands because some people like see others putting their hands. Just find a position that is, is comfortable, not too comfortable that you actually are snoring <laughs> and sleeping there. <laughs> but in a, in, a, in a very comfortable position, right? that it allows you to to just kind of be in that in that uh, mood and then you start um hearing your uh your own breathing and then uh you just start going through uh if you are not able to do that it's okay actually that's part of the training uh you'll start with seconds <laughs> you start <laughs> then with minutes and moving on to even hours right and and there is no there is no, um, you're not winning basically a stage because people think that, ah, oh, I don't know how to meditate. I suck at this. 
it's not like that. It's, it's literally the exercise of doing it. You are getting already uh, something about it. So um, I'll describe myself when I'm able to know that I'm in meditative state. It's because for me, it's a very calm and tranquil uh, stage. Almost like a, uh, uh, the best explanation that I will tell you is like, imagine that you're inside of a pool, like submerged, and with your eyes closed and almost no sound. And basically, it's very, very calm, right? So uh, almost I, I stop hearing my chatter on my mind. And then I can literally see my thoughts or, or figure it out in a very clear way. So at least that's for me. Hmm. That's very cool. So I, I've, I've done it. I've tried it a, a few times, like I mentioned. But the, more, the times that I've done it, it's like been guided mm -hmm. uh, meditation. Someone else kind of guiding you through, you know, they, they kind of tell you how to sit, you kind of get relaxed, and they guide you through some steps that are supposed to help you, uh, I guess, get into that flow state, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, it's, it feels almost like a little hypnosis, but it's not, I don't think it's meant to be like hypnosis, but it's kind of like just this, and they guide you through this thing. And the ones that I've done is like 30, 45 minutes, and mm -hmm. they kind of talk to you about envisioning certain things and um, identifying your energy or light, focusing on light, things like that, kind of go to a calm place. Um, so it's really interesting. And I, I do, I know that there's some difference afterwards and things like that, but I haven't done it like consistently enough to really see any uh, lasting benefit or anything is, like that. You can do it even in movement. When you are dancing, you could do it. Like also Tai Chi is a meditation in movement. So mm -hmm. there are many ways for, because the, the whole idea is for you to concentrate. When you are, when somebody's guiding you, you're getting concentrated by the guide and the person that is guiding you. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, uh, but it's the same effect, right? Um, there is other types of uh, meditation. Um, and one of my friends, um, he likes to meditate by remembering. But I think that for that, you have to have a little bit more memory uh, because he is trying to re remember what happened the last hour and every hour, like what happened in two hours ago, three hours ago, and so on. And sometimes he, he became so good with that that uh, he can do it per year. Like mm. what happened in 2018? What happened in 2000, right? So Is this and, Wicho again? <laughs> no, that's, that's not Wicho. Uh, I, will not, I will not disclose his name, but uh, uh, this guy is, is, uh, is basically uh, an executive for a 500 Fortune company. Uh -huh. So, uh, yeah, and that was, that's his way of, um, uh, of meditating. For me, I find that one difficult because uh, I don't have that good of a great memory. Uh, but it's another good exercise, right? Uh, the other one that I noticed that people use when they are starting meditation is the body scanning. Uh, that gives you awareness of your own body. Mm -hmm. So you start as well in your position, close your eyes, and then you start with your toes, like uh, your big toe, and then you start moving to your toe, and you don't move them. You just are aware that you feel it. And then start moving to, to, your, to, to your knee, to your shin, right? To all of your different, almost like muscles. If you can figure out each of your muscles up to your, your fingers, right? So, and that helps a lot too because, again, you're trying to focus on, on something. And I feel that that one, people get, it's easier because they are kind of moving it around that, that they don't get too frustrated that they cannot uh, stay on that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ah, pretty cool. So it seems like there's a little bit of uh, a little bit of something for everybody there at Burning Man, and hey, maybe you, you can even practice your your meditation while you're there. Uh, anything else you want to add about Burning Man before we move yeah. on to the next topic? I think that people ask me on the bathroom situation. Yes, oh, it yeah. sucks. You might you might have <laughs> to poop in a bucket. <laughs> <laughs> so, there, I mean, dude, just, just, just think that it's only one week, right? If you might have to make a hole in the ground <laughs> and do your duties I you're there. you not supposed to leave anything behind. <laughs> well, I mean, it's like it's nat nature calls, it's nature. man. Nature calls. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I can't so, live without my, uh, the one that squirts the water. <laughs> uh, I, I would not judge you, man. <laughs> <laughs> you want something to tickle you. <laughs> you got to make sure it's clean. <laughs> uh, for sure. I, I, I do think that is, um, 
It, mm. The pressure of a bidet. I do not have a bidet, <laughs> but uh, I, I think that even for, for females, it also might help a lot, right? With, yeah. with, because it's better than just having the, um, the paper, right? So, yeah. Uh, but yeah, uh, the, the bathroom, bathroom situation is bad for, for females too, right? Because uh, just, you could just imagine uh, oh, yeah. sometimes depending on where you go, but here is a trick though. You have to go in the mornings because in the mornings they, they, they do service twice a day. So the, the best time is try to figure out what time is the service that they're clean, right? So you don't, you don't smell anything or everything. So they are, they're okay. Or uh, just have an RV. <laughs> but also there is also problems because you have to, to literally uh, remove the, you know, the, the, the whole thing and you have to dump it as well. So, it is it is always tricky that's i think that that's kind of the tricky part mm, but uh, yeah <laughs> i don't i don't want to detect people go it's one of those uh, things that you have to do once in your life and maybe i'll see you there <laughs> maybe you never know next year right yes i'll be <laughs> i'll be gifting you something because that's the other thing you you you're supposed to enroll maybe to help or gift something so that's kind of the the thing sometimes people like i have some uh, some colors, right? That people gifted to me, and and vice versa. Some you see different type of gifts. Oh, that's cool! Like when it's your first time, they give you stuff. No, or like just every, in general. Any time in general. Like ah, uh, if, okay. if you see somebody that you have good vibe or it help you to do something, you just feel that you want to give something. And sometimes it's things that you actually have, like a, like I don't know, maybe you just want to give your shirt or whatever, right? So no. whatever you <laughs> you have in on you. Uh, I learned that, and that way, that's the reason why I have gifts for people, um, and now I, I give them. But sometimes, oh. uh, it's, it's funny, because sometimes I get gifted something, and I, I don't need it or want it, but I can re-gift it, and it's okay. <laughs> 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 right? The whole idea is that the gifts, they, are, they, they, they keep it, the people that they wanted to keep them, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, pretty cool. That's a neat neat concept uh, for, for Burning Man is kind of that gifting mm -hmm. culture. But I yep. think it, it kind of does make sense because the whole thing is like, uh, you know, helping others even from camp to camp. And like you said, you can go ask for cereal or waffles or whatever and mm -hmm. people hook you up. <laughs> for sure. Yeah. That's pretty cool. All righty. Well, uh, I, I, I think I'd encourage everybody to at least look it up. And I know there's lots of stuff on Instagram, TikTok, on the news out there right now. But uh, uh, pretty neat. Look into it. See if you're interested. Maybe next year you'll see Mondo out there uh, cooking it up <laughs> and asking for waffles. <laughs> for sure. Hey, so uh, before we close out, just I think we just wanted to share some of the news that's been going on um, uh, around uh, crypto and the economy. So one of the things, you know, it's happy Bitcoin day, I guess, uh, a little bit earlier. I think there's several Bitcoin days, but this is the one where uh, um, Bukele from El Salvador actually made uh, Bitcoin um the legal tender September 7th it's it's been two years now mm -hmm. so that's pretty cool um that you know they've a lot of people said you know Bukele doesn't know what he's doing why is he gonna do this it's, <laughs> it's like he's gonna bring the country down like <laughs> but I think you know they've started to kind of build that culture around crypto and bitcoin um what have you seen about it I, I think that um is one of those pioneers right and usually the first pioneers they get like arrows in their back <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, he's getting backslash, but uh, I mean, it has been two years already um, that he implemented. I think that uh, if Argentina, Argentina and uh, uh, Venezuela they start adopting the, the, their currency, will have a, uh, they would be able to back it up their currency, right? So I think that we might start seeing other countries because it hasn't been bad. In on the contrary, it's kind of helping them. They. They invested about uh, 37, almost close to 40% of their uh, their money, right? Their bankroll for the country mm -hmm. into Bitcoin. So it's not that much, um, but it's still, you know, for the whole country. And right now, uh, they almost doubled it, right? Like uh, um, based on the, on the pricing and all of that. So um, it hasn't been even a bad investment as a country for El Salvador. Yeah, for sure. And uh, I'm sure they're doing their, ver their own version of dollar cost averaging, right? So, mm -hmm. um, you know, 
they're they're just kind of more consistently buying instead of trying to time the market or anything like that. So that's really good. Yeah. And it's interesting that you mentioned about some of the other countries. So I know there was, I think his name was Javier Millet from Argentina. He's also a Bitcoin supporter, um, and he I think he's a presidential candidate that was in the lead. You know, that's that was a few years. I mean, not a few years, but a few uh, weeks or a month or two back. I'm not sure where they are with their. Uh, uh, election or anything like that but he had ideas of like you know abolishing the central bank and things like that but in order to adopt something that like bitcoin and i think uh, bukele is is helping with that because he's showing you know how it can be done how it can work for the government and some of the stability that it can bring yeah for sure i i think that um we'll, we'll start seeing it uh the other thing is bricks uh what do you know about bricks well, I know it's kind of like a grouping of countries, right? So when you hear BRICS, it actually stands for specific countries, right? Yeah, I usually started with uh, Brazil, Russia, India, uh, uh, South Africa. But the interesting thing to, to pay attention is that uh, they're trying to create a, a currency because they're trying to go against the dollar. That's kind of what it is evolves into internally. Uh, what it happens is that now they are recruiting other countries. So they they literally recruited uh, Egypt, Argentina, Ethiopia. So again, they are trying to expand it. Mm -hmm. And in my opinion, this is this is bad for the dollar because they are trying to de-dollarize the whole the, the whole literally the, world. the whole world, right? So yeah, <laughs> yeah. literally. And, and we'll see how uh, when if the if the oil start getting priced in bricks or in another currency, it's going to make a shift in, in the economy. What, what do you think? Yeah, for sure. I think uh, a lot of the strength that the U.S. dollar has had is because it's, right, the world is denominated in U.S. dollars. But as countries start moving off or they start creating pacts within themselves, like the BRIC countries, um, that that definitely weakens the U.S. dollar. Um, I'm also interested to see, you know, maybe there can be another another pack of countries that are more crypto focused or Bitcoin based and things like that. So that's probably something else to look into and look forward to is that, uh, you know, there, there could be other things at play and maybe Bukele can be, it can be a leader in, in that area as well and see kind of how that affects the U S market and Bitcoin and crypto market in general too. I mean, that would be fabulous, right? So, um, because it's truly decentralized because BRICS, it's very likely that Russia and China will control the the currency, right? So, which is the same the same thing that we we were doing. Um, there is this. Um, uh, do you know his name is Ray Dalio? Um, mm. Ray Dalio is kind of like the Steve Jobs of finance. Like the guy is like a eminence, right? So, uh, he is the the bankers of governments, right? Like uh, uh, the governments can print money and make money and all of that, but uh, essentially, they sometimes they have to trade with other countries, and basically, uh, Bridgewater, which is the company that, that this guy founded, um, they manage a lot of the uh, all of that money for countries and governments. Uh -huh. Anyways, uh, the same guy he wrote a book. Uh, I forget the name, but I think that is something like a changing orders, yeah. and basically, he describes that there are cycles uh, for each. Um, empire, right? And you see it with the Romans, you see it with um, the Dutch uh, and <laughs> the, the British and et cetera, et cetera, right? So mm -hmm. now, obviously, right now is the, is the US and the one that is coming up is China. So uh, I think that um, uh, Ray Dalio um, didn't contemplate crypto uh, in, in, in that mix. And I think that it could happen what he's describing, right? That you see more like the, the yuan, right? The, the, the currency from China to pick up. But I think that maybe uh, something that is there is, is crypto, right? What happened if Bitcoin uh, gets more uh, adoption in different countries, right? Uh, you see, imagine if literally uh, Venezuela, Colombia, uh, and maybe some other countries, they start picking it up. It, it might make a different, interesting dynamic. Yeah, for sure. I think there's a lot of opportunity there. And I think, um, you know, we're st Bitcoin and crypto generally is still fairly new, even though, right, a lot of us have been in it for over a decade at this point. But um, there's there's 
in terms of it being used in large institutions, large organizations, uh, multinationals, things like that, you know, it's, it, it's just barely starting. So there's a lot, a lot to come in that area. And there's just um, a lot of a, a market there for, for crypto and Bitcoin to kind of get into. Uh, so interesting to see. And I know that's probably one of the reasons why China was kind of uh, always trying to ban. I think they banned, Bitcoin like 10 times already, something like that. Yeah, in the beginning, <laughs> that was actually a reason for the price to go down, but now the market doesn't care, right? <laughs> like, right. okay, China, here it is again. <laughs> <laughs> what now? <laughs> yeah. yeah, for sure. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, that I mean, it's pretty interesting. And and speaking of kind of the um, the economy and the federal, the federal reserve and things like that here in the U S um, I saw, I saw this report recently, I think it was on CNN where they talked a little bit about how the, the U S uh, or several U S households are going to run out of money soon. So apparently uh, during the pandemic pandemic, the, the average U S household overall saved up to like over $2 trillion um, in savings, right? Just because they weren't traveling, they weren't buying as much, you know, everyone was cooped up at home um, during the pandemic. And once those things started kind of lifting, a lot of people started spending. I think, you know, it's one of the reasons, obviously uh, inflation started to take hold and things like that. You know, there's a money printing and everything like that, but people were like spending, spending, spending even though prices were going up, but it's because they had a lot of, I guess you could call it like pent up demand um, mm -hmm. of, of that money that they had. Well, you know, now that, you know, we've been kind of out of the, the protocols where we're staying home and things like that, people are actually running out of their savings. And the federal reserve is saying that, you know, those two trillions that the U S households had saved up during the pandemic, that's mm -hmm. almost out, you know, there we're down to $190 billion only and they're they're saying that within the next month or two um u.s households are going to deplete their savings so i think a lot of people uh went out there and they did their revenge spending their revenge travel <laughs> this is what i think uh, people are calling it they're like well i couldn't go to you know make my road trip so i'm doing two road trips this year you know mm -hmm. and they're going to spend all that money that they that they had saved up have you heard of, of any of this no but I, it kind of it makes sense psychologically speaking, right? You were like whole year and a half, like uh, like some people they were taking it seriously, right? Like uh, they were not going out and etc. So I I can see why the last year and a half, right, or twenty two and twenty twenty three, uh, that happening, right? On top of that, inflation was up, and then they were using their savings to to buy even a new house, right? So uh, it, it it is very hard to to predict what will happen, right? Um, maybe the government will make um, good decisions right? <laughs> and they will start deflating it and maybe lowering uh, interest rates, which maybe that's what might happen. They see these numbers are declining, so they start actually pulling back on the interest rates, which it will allow a more stable um, number. Maybe instead of being 75% interest rates for mortgages, maybe it'll go back to 4 or 5 right? So, which it doesn't choke the whole economy, right? Mm -hmm. But again, hard to predict at this point, man. I think that we just need to watch it. Yeah, for sure. I think um, during this time, uh, the the whole uh, rates going up and things like that, I think it's accomplished kind of what they wanted, which is like slowing the Slow economy up. down, right? Um, less spending. People are running out of savings, so they're not spending as much. So things are certainly starting to... Um, to turn the corner there and i think right even the rates are are slowing down in terms of the the fed raising the rates and things like that so i think uh we'll we'll see kind of what that's going to look like but uh slowing down the economy it looks like they're 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 getting a lot closer to where they want to be so we'll right. see what what that means for the future here over the next few months as people start running out of savings what does that really mean um are they not going to be able to pay their bills as easily things like that um, sometimes these things have kind of this domino effect. So uh, it's something to watch over the next couple of months. Um, and one last thing, I for those of you that have been following my kind of Tesla journey, uh, I did mention <laughs> last time that my Tesla broke, right? The, the Model Y that we had, 
Uh, we got an over there update. Just throw it away and tell me where you're throwing it away. <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, you know, the sensor stopped working, the camera stopped working, the GPS stopped working. I mean, it was still drivable and everything like that. Those are just kind of the extras that stopped working. Um, and, you know, they were going to send someone over to fix it. Didn't happen. So I had to schedule some uh, some time a whole month later. So I didn't have backup cameras and stuff like that for a month, which was mildly annoying. But, um yeah, uh, they, they fixed it within a day. They gave me a loaner, and um, actually, there's something interesting about the loaner, but they did fix it. They replaced my computer, man. Oh, wow. <laughs> I don't know wow. what they did. They must have bricked something when they did the, uh, the over-the-air the update, update. The firmware. Mm -hmm. um, and some, they just couldn't recover it. Probably easier just to replace, replace the computer. So they gave me a new computer. You know, it was kind of covered under warranty and everything, and it, it, it just took a day. Um, and so, yeah, we got it back to normal, but on the, the loaner they gave me, it had mm -hmm. the full self-driving, yeah, um, yeah. on there and everything like that. So I tried it out. Oh my goodness. That thing is not ready. <laughs> At least not in my area. It, it like, it was, <laughs> it got me into several situations. There was not, I tried it probably five or six times mm -hmm. in that one day that I had it every single time I had to like turn it off, cut it off. Cause one, it had me like sitting in the middle of an intersection, like after my light turn and I'm like, okay, yeah, you know, gotta, gotta take that off. Now what I'm worried about is like, there's a lot of dings and beeps and shit like that. My rate's probably going to go up again on my inch. <laughs> it's like, but it's not my fault. It's a, it's a dang uh, uh, self-driving. thing was driving by itself. <laughs> yeah. It's like, can't blame me for it. But uh, yeah, so anyways, that's the experience with the full self-driving. No, not not anywhere near ready, at least not in a kind of city type environment where, where I was driving. And it was all within like a three, four mile area that I was doing this. Mm -hmm. And yeah, no, I, I couldn't take my, I don't know how people fall asleep driving their Teslas with it like that. Maybe if they're on the highway, I can see that, but no, not, yeah, not in like highway, which street is driving. Mm -mm. I don't think mm -hmm. so, buddy. <laughs> not there yet. All right. Uh, anything, anything else you want to add before we no. finish off today? No, I think that we have a good one. All right. Well, uh, for our listeners out there, just remember to like, subscribe, and comment on our content. Tell your friends about it. Again, we're still a new podcast. We're trying to get the word out. If you liked it, you know, share it with your friends and send the links out. Um, again, uh, if, if you're thinking about buying a Tesla, use my referral code. I think we both <laughs> get something out of it. Uh, don't be scared off by my stories. All in all, it's a, it's been a good experience, but I like to be transparent. Uh, with you're those. not telling it, man. We told all your such stories. Uh, yeah, well, you, you got to go into it with uh, eyes wide open right so i think that's good so uh again the referral link will be in the notes um closing thoughts on burning man uh you think uh after this year it's gonna attend it's gonna be up or down doesn't matter i'm still going man <laughs> <laughs> burners will be burners and uh yes just just uh fyi you know i did mention about the savings and just in general hey don't spend all your money. Keep the savings. You need to have an emergency account ready emergency to go. Account. So uh, you never know what's going to happen. Your Tesla well, rainy day. Out. <laughs> yeah, okay. It's always right. a rainy day. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Well, we'll leave you all with that. Uh, so go forth sin miedo. Sin miedo. <laughs>